Okay. As you may know, I'm going to give you a little bit of history lesson, and then the kids is going to help me out. I get all these good helpers. I got wonderful helpers. But I was telling somebody, and most of you that are farmers, y'all all know that a tom turkey is the only one that spreads its feathers. Female turkeys don't have a tail like this. And I told the kids, this turkey here, he thought, he thought that he could disguise himself and put on a scarf and be a female turkey and then they wouldn't kill him. And I'm like, see, he was so scared. See how he's shaking? Scared to death he's gonna be killed so he's trying to dress up. So if anybody wants to know why he's got the scarf on, he's trying not to be killed because he knows Thanksgiving is coming. And if you see all our turkeys up here, and we got them, the church has got the turkeys and we're working on our Thanksgiving dinners. I know, I know it's okay, it's gonna be all right. So, as, as what I'm, I brought them up, because I like to bring the kids and get them involved too. And they help me out a lot. These turkeys here, some of them sing, right? And some of them dance, and some of them jump and move. And then, today, I made a challenge last week, and I think somebody's got my basket. I'm gonna let you step right up here. I told the kids, anybody that brought anything to donate to the, to the dinner, they were gonna get these. So this morning, I was so pleased because everybody, some of the kids come to me, they brought green beans and they brought, let's see, where's KK? Hold them up there. And KK and Harmony, they bought beans. I got some that brought money. Hold your money up, kids. Say, all of them brought it to give to the Thanksgiving dinner. That's what you can do. We're doing it as a church to give to families that won't have a Thanksgiving dinner. And that's what we want to do. This week, as you know, we break it down each week. And this week we have uh, our desserts, which Jonathan here, we got icing and we got cake mix. You could bring brownie mix, whatever you want to bring. Next week's going to be bread, rolls. Because next week will be the last Sunday. The Sunday we give out our meals, the Monday before Thanksgiving. So I want to encourage you, if you haven't already brought something, or maybe you just want to give money. If you want to give money, you can put it on your tie envelope, put Thanksgiving dinner on it, and we know that it's going to go out to help. Or you can come to me and say, here, Sister Kay, I want to give this to you, to you for the Thanksgiving dinners. Also, I want to make sure we know, if you know anybody that needs a Thanksgiving dinner, please let me know. Give me their name, and what I know is their name and how many's in the family. That way we can fix their dinner to suit the family. But I think I've got a great team up here, don't y'all? I want y'all to give the kids a hand. Good. So when we go down, kids, I'll give you your, your um, what is that thing, a jelly? Juicy. See, they know what it is. <laughs> See? See, they know what it is. Each one of these that brought is going to get one. But thank all of you for everything that you do, and all, God will bless you. Amen. Amen. Welcome to Remedy this morning. Stand with us. Let's give give our kids and Sister Kay and everybody a hand clap. Amen. So cute. We thank thank you guys for all you do. Um, giving, helping out the community. You know, we're not just a church of this building. The building isn't a church, right? Amen. Everybody awake this morning? The church is us, the body of Christ, right? We have to go out, minister, do what Jesus would have us to do, right? Let's give God some praise in the house this morning. He is worthy. We are thankful to be here this morning, to be able to come and worship Him, which is why we're here. Amen. Amen. Does anybody have anything in their life that the devil just messed up for you there's some things we give him too much credit for but there are some things that he just he steps in the way because he knows what God's he tries to mess it up but he can't right amen well I went to the enemy's camp and I took back what he stole from me took back what he stole from me took back what he stole from me i went to the enemy's camp and i took back what he stole from me he's under my feet 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 satan Took back what he stole from me. 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 
this one more time okay we got the nerves out we got the we came in we all fellowshiped right we're gonna sing some praises to the Lord this morning right we came here to worship him no matter what we feel like because our feelings have nothing to do with worshiping God sometimes it's easy sometimes it's hard but we're gonna worship him because of him Satan is under our feet because of him we have all authority to claim the victory over Satan because of God, amen. Well, I went to the enemy's camp and I took back what he stole from me. I took back what he stole from me. I took back what he stole from me. I went to the enemy's camp and I took back what he stole from me. He's under my feet. 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 Well, Satan is under my feet. Well, I went to the enemy's camp and I took back what he stole from me. I took back what he stole from me. I took back what he stole from me. Stay right there, stay right there. You know, as I look out over the house this morning, I wonder is there anybody in here that you have the assurance that Satan is literally under your feet this morning? That, that was okay. Let me explain to you what I'm saying. I was a crack addict. I was overdosing on acid, and it was at the name of Jesus that God found me. So when he did that, he said, son, here's the keys to victory. So so I can step all over the enemy's face this morning? Is that okay? Can I jump around? Is that all right? I need somebody to do something as a significant act of obedience. Take your right foot, stick it up in the air, and stomp it down. Now do the same thing to your left foot. Do you realize what you're doing this morning? All of hell is getting hey, All of hell is getting nervous because when the saints are when the saints get together, there releases a sound from heaven. It gets the ears of Jesus and they're like what's going on down at Remedy. Let me come down amongst them and see what's going on. They ain't got it, Sister Megan. Did I not say before? I'm going to talk to Megan for a minute. You just listen to me. Did I not say before that God is not required to show up just because we do? We need to invite his presence into the house. There was a time in my life I was struggling. I'm a Christian. I love Jesus. But how many knows that old boogerhead wants to show his ugly face time to time? And sometimes we get in our feelings and we don't know what to do. And I'm outside and I'm praying. And I'm praying, and all of a sudden, I, I got stung by a bee. Got on my nerves. And I, st I went to the bathroom. I wasn't crying. Let me go ahead and clarify that right now. I was not crying. I had allergies. No, I'm just playing. 
So I got stung by a bee, killed the whole flow of my prayer. And I'm like, God, I just don't understand because I was like feeling and, and, and God said, where did he sting you at? we come to church and we wait on man to tell us what to do I said that God said where did he sting you I said well God he stung me under my foot he said well where do you think the enemy is morning I reverence your holy name we want to welcome your presence up in this house this morning father we can't make it without you God we need you we're still hungry we're still desperate for the presence of God father I need you in my life I can't make it another day God I've got to have you take this world take everything but just give me Jesus just give me Jesus so father we want to welcome your presence in here first and foremost God we just want to bless your name we thank you God for the liberty and the victory God that we have maybe some people don't get it quite yet but God we're just going to invite your presence up in here for you when you come down for where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty so God we welcome you this morning come on remedy church open up your mouth and give God a praise up in here don't listen to my next word. Can you not think about how God good has been good to you? Thank you, Jesus. Some of you wouldn't even be here. You wouldn't even be here if God did not make a way of provision for you. It's true. Amen. I will trust in you. I will trust in you, my God. There is a fountain. Who is a king? Victorious warrior. Lord 
Yeah. 
just open the floodgates of heaven, God. Just let it rain. Let it rain. We're here. Open the floodgates of heaven. One more time. Let it rain. We wait on you, God. Let it rain in full submission. Open the floodgates of heaven. Let it rain. Oh, Jesus. Let it rain. Just open. I live to worship 
worship you. I live, I live to worship you. To worship. our voices oh, oh, oh. in one accord we sing oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, Why are you living today? Why are you living today? What purpose do you have for your life? What are you seeking for in this life? Are you seeking after the one whose very breath is what gave you life today? When he molded Adam out of the dust of the ground and he breathed into him, he breathed Jesus Christ into him because Jesus is the very breath, the very word of God breathed into him, giving life. When I was born, I was dead in trespasses and sin. But hallelujah. One day when I accepted Him as my Lord and Savior, He breathed life back into me. And He gave me a purpose for living, which was to worship Him. I have no other purpose. I'm His vessel. He bought me with a price when He died on the cross of Calvary. First Peter 3 15 says to give a reason for the hope that is within you to be ready at all times to give reason for the hope within you yes. the only reason I'm alive today is to worship you Jesus. thank you Jesus thank you Jesus Let's sing this one more time from our heart. To worship you, I live. To worship you, I live. I live to worship you. To worship you, I live. To worship you. I live, I live to worship you. Thank you, Jesus. Oh. Oh. Oh, oh Father. Oh. Thank you, Jesus. Father, on the day of Pentecost, when they were gathered together in one accord, there was a sound that came from heaven like a mighty rushing wind, and it flooded the house where they were at. When the body of Christ comes together in one accord for one purpose, which is to worship Him, heaven's going to meet earth. 
and his presence is going to flood in here like a mighty rushing wind let's invite him in here today as we finish not finishing our worship because we're going to continue our worship our entire life outside this building is for his worship father we come to you right now as as the book of daniel says in verse 8, it says that Daniel purposed in his heart. Lord, we purpose in our heart right now to worship you today. And from every day of our life going forward, we purpose in our heart to worship you. Lord, I pray right now, Lord Jesus, you said we're two or three are gathered together in your name. You're in the midst, Lord Jesus. And Lord, I pray right now, Lord Jesus, and believe with all my heart that someone is here today needs you and needs to hear from you lord i pray right now lord jesus that you will touch hearts and touch minds and lord jesus that the enemy lord jesus will be bound right now lord jesus and prevented from interfering from your word going forth that lord jesus the bird will come and steal the seed lord jesus that lord this, the soil will be prepared right now in the name of jesus to receive your word and that, Lord Jesus, it will reach deep into soil, Lord Jesus, and take root in our lives. And, Lord, we give you all the praise and glory for it in your precious and holy name. Amen. Lord Jesus, find two or three people to encourage today, Lord Jesus, that we're here to worship him today. And if our ushers will come forward, please. Again, we'd like to welcome you to Remedy today. If you're a guest with us today, we're happy to have you. Inside your bulletin, there is a, a flap that we call our prayer connection card. We'd love for you to fill that out and list down any need that you have because, again, the one that we worship is also the one that's here to meet your need today. And we believe that. He said he would meet your need according to his riches and glory. So if you'll fill that out, also, uh, again, we'll have video announcements in just a second. But please pay attention to the bulletin. There's a lot going on uh, in the next couple months. Uh, a lot of opportunities to, to, to worship Him through not only giving, but also in service uh, with Better to Give and with Thanksgiving meals and things like that. So please uh, make note of those things. Now we want to continue our worship by giving in our tithes and offerings. Again, we're worshiping the one who gave us life. And I don't know what your situations are and I don't know what your life is like. But the Lord is worthy to be praised. And so... Let's give our all to Him today. Let's bow our heads. Father, we come to You right now. Lord, I thank You for this day and this opportunity. Lord, I pray that You'll bless this offering to you, use in Your kingdom. Lord, I pray, Jesus, that, that You will bless the gift and the giver. Lord, I pray, Jesus, that, Lord, our, our lives will be poured out before You, Lord Jesus. That, Lord Jesus, we would give ourselves as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable to god which is our reasonable service and lord we give you all the praise and glory for it in your precious and your holy name amen welcome to remedy we're happy you've chosen to worship with us today we would like to extend a warm remedy welcome to bishop nathan atwood our guest speaker today if you are new to remedy we'd like to welcome you to our church we hope you received a bulletin 
there is a tab in your bulletin with a prayer card attached. We'd love to partner with you in praying for any requests that you'd like to share with us. Please fill out the prayer card and place it in the offering bag, or you can take it to the Connect Center at the end of service to receive a free Remedy t-shirt. Our annual Thanksgiving Meals giveaway has begun. Please check your bulletin for the list of items needed. Any food donations will be distributed to families in need. If you would rather give a financial donation towards this ministry, it is always appreciated. If you know of any families in need, please see Sister Kay Garman. All items will be given out to families on November 19th. We will be having a Thanksgiving lunch on November 18th after morning service. Please bring drinks, dessert, or a side dish. Meats will be provided. Have a favorite Thanksgiving memory? We will be sharing these with our Remedy family. This year, we will be doing a church-wide Secret Santa. Please sign up by November 25th. See Sister Megan Killian for details. Don't forget the practice sessions for the Christmas play. Next practice will be November 11th. Check your bulletin for all practice dates and times. This year's Christmas program, The Reason Why, will be held on December 22nd and 23rd. Kannapolis District Fellowship Meeting will be November 18th at 6 o'clock in the Enochville Church of God. The address is 199 North Enochville Avenue, Kannapolis, North Carolina. Any donations to our toy drive after October will go to next year's Better to Give. Our Christmas giveaway for Better to Give will be Saturday, December 8th. There are opportunities to serve including welcome committee, toy stations, gift wrapping, and prayer station. Let Pastor Killian or Sister Phyllis know if you would like to sign up. Remedy Kids are now dismissed. Amen, amen. Remedy Kids, you guys can go ahead and get ready to go to class. We love seeing our kids in service with us. They're an encouragement when they praise. It's just awesome. Um, it's so good to have everyone in the house today. As we know, uh, Pastor is in Israel, so he left yesterday, and he is there today. And we just want to pray, you know, continue to keep him in prayer that he just has an awesome experience, that he's filled, and that he comes back refreshed on that trip. And uh, today we have a special guest in the house that's going to be speaking, Bishop Atwood. It's funny for me to call him Bishop because I've known him since before he was a bishop. We've known each other since our kids were very small, and um, he's a great man of God. I love you, brother. But he's here with his two kids. His wife is uh, at home. They're missionaries in South America, and so she's back home with their two foster kids, which are soon to be their kids. And uh, we just want to welcome him. If everyone would give him a clap. Thank you, brother. You are a blessing. And uh, it's a privilege to, to have known Michael and Heather and their children for a long time. And um, it's, it's so good to be here today. This has been a wonderful morning already. Man, you know, I'm the, I'm the preacher, so I love to preach. But sometimes, in moments like these, when we started singing uh, Let It Rain, I was like, man, I don't, I don't really want to preach now. I just want to keep worshiping but um, like our brother said you know worship really isn't just singing and praising it's it's our life you know, our lives are to be living sacrifices of worship to him and uh, and thank you um, pastor Cody's not here but I'm just so accustomed to thinking thanking the pastor for allowing me to come and so uh, if you would I'll be in touch with him but if you would tell him I said thank you for having me. And Sister Megan. <laughs> yes, I'm sure. God bless you all. God bless you all. Let's see here. I think I want to just continue by um, reading the scripture for this morning for a message that God has placed on my heart. 
from Acts chapter 1, verse 8. <clears throat> if you have your Bible or your, your uh, device, if you could go with me to Acts 1, 8. Or if you have it memorized. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Father, we thank you for your word. It is quick and powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. Your word changes us. It strengthens us. It guides us. And what you said in your word, you still say today. So Lord, may we remember that your word is alive. It is for us. Father, we just invite you to speak to us through your Holy Spirit today. Our hearts, our ears are open. Change us. Make us more like you today, Father. Make us more like you today, Jesus. Make us more like you today, Holy Spirit. We pray for the gifts of the Spirit. We pray for uh, that the fruit of the Spirit would be abundant in our lives. We pray, Lord God, that you would encourage us and empower us today afresh by your Spirit to go and, and to preach your Word, to proclaim the Gospel, to share your love, to pray for people, Lord God, to heal the sick, to cast out demons. Lord, to, to demonstrate your love in ways that are just going to amaze us and amaze those around us. Father, it's in Jesus' precious and mighty and wonderful name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. You know, the Lord has uh, been so wonderful to us, to our family. As, as Michael mentioned, we've had the, the privilege of serving as missionaries. Uh, really for the past nine years, even though officially it was uh, eight years ago, uh, just last month, and we, we've we lived in Guatemala. We've served in there for a couple of years. We've ministered and, and served and lived in Honduras for several years, and uh, and what a wonderful adventure it has been. Um, Allison and I, my wife Allison and I, have served uh, with the agency, the missions agency organization called Go To Nations. It's based in Jacksonville, Florida. And we have missionaries all over the world, hundreds of missionaries all over the world. And our purpose is to, to advance the kingdom, to, to preach the gospel, to make disciples until every tribe, tongue, and nation has, has heard the good news. And um, currently we are serving as directors of pastoral care for all of Latin America because we realize that missionaries need pastors too. And even though all of our missionaries have home churches and they have pastors in their home churches in, in the United States or wherever country they are being launched from, um, we serve as their missions pastors, so to speak, in that most pastors in the United States don't know what it's like to serve overseas as a cross-cultural missionary. And since we've been serving in that role for eight years, um, we know a little bit more about that than, than most pastors. So we serve as, as uh, their, their pastors who help them navigate crises, um, help them to, to walk through the, the stresses and the challenges that are unique to, to missionary life, and so we are just so grateful to be serving in that role. However, we had to switch gears a little bit. It's been almost a year now. Gosh, I can't believe it's been almost a year, but uh, last December, we found out that my kidneys were failing and that I was going to need to start dialysis. And we knew about my kidney condition, and Heather and Michael, you guys remember this, in 2004, the news that I had kidney disease you know, hit me like a ton of bricks. Um, but miraculously, for 14 years, there was no change in my kidney function. Even though I was at stage four kidney failure, there was no, no change for 14 years, and I had no symptoms. Every time I would go see my doctor, he would be in tears 
in amazement, in amazement how well I was doing. But then all of a sudden, in December of last year, we found out that my kidney function had dropped dramatically. I had just gone in for routine lab work. It was just one of those things I did every six months and uh, wasn't expecting any change. If any change, I was expecting it to, to, to finally improve, even though the doctors say the, the, this condition never gets better. And I would always say, well, it may never get better according to the medical books, but I serve a God who can do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. He is our healer. He is our healer. And I keep telling people, well, I've been telling people that God is going to heal me, but I, I realize that I'm, I really want to stand in the now. I want my faith to be present because I believe that faith is something that, that God wants in our lives at every moment. And it really, I realized, you know, it really didn't take a whole lot of faith to say God will heal me because you know the future is just so abstract and you know you can never really catch up to the future so I realized it wasn't really requiring much faith of me to say I will be healed of this this disease so I'm, I'm saying I am healed and it might even happen before I leave this place today would you believe that with me would you join your faith with mine and believe for healing right now Yes, Lord. By your stripes, by your suffering, by your love, and by your power, I am healed. This disease has no power over me, and it bows its knee at your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. I am healed. I am whole. I am restored in Jesus' name. And if there's anybody else here who needs healing, I want you to stand. And believe with me for your healing. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, we just pray healing over every sickness. You are healed in Jesus' name. You are whole in Jesus' name. By the stripes of Jesus, everyone in this place who came in here sick and in pain and not well, even those who have gotten comfortable with their condition, I want you to get uncomfortable with your condition right now and receive healing in Jesus' name. Receive what he wants for you. There are no sick people in heaven. And Jesus taught us to pray, Lord, your will be done on earth. Your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is there anybody who was sick or in pain and you felt something? You feel something coming over. You feel like God is healing you. If, if there is anyone, I invite you to stand and just, just testify of what God's done. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We praise you. Last Sunday afternoon, I had the privilege of coming to the Charlotte area and preaching at the, the Charlotte Rescue Mission. If you don't know what, what that is, it's a, it's a shelter and rehab center for men who are struggling and want to be free from, from uh, drug addiction, alcoholism. And it's, it has had a very, very high success rate of, of helping men and women. Uh, but in this case, the, the shelter is for, for men. And uh, they've had a very high success rate in seeing men free and empowered to, to, to get jobs 
and, and to live a life for Christ. And that's why it's had such a high success rate is because the focus is faith in Jesus and obedience and love for him. And they recognize that they are loved by him. And when we recognize just how loved we are by God, what freedom there is. What freedom there is in that. What, that's, that's what made the difference in our lives. Whenever we gave our lives to Jesus, it wasn't so much what we did. It's what we recognized he did and what he is doing, what he desires to do in our lives. And so I, I had the, the chance to minister there. And was, we, were, we had a chapel service that day. And there were probably 75 men there worshiping the Lord. And um, as we were singing Amazing Grace, I, I recognized there was something in my pocket. And what it was, it was a little bottle of anointing oil that I thought I had lost months ago. Like I was looking all over for that thing, and it was here in my jacket the whole time. I just haven't worn this since last winter. And um, I just felt like the Lord was prompting me before I even preached uh, to have people who, who needed healing for sickness or pain to come. And there were probably 20 men who came for, for prayer. And there was one young man who came up. And I don't know, the Lord may have touched others, but for some reason this particular uh, young man who came up really just, just stood out to me. And he, he told me that he was having this shooting pain, this sharp shooting pain that started here in his head, but then traveled down his neck and even into his shoulder. He wasn't sure what it was, um, but he was getting ready to go to the doctor the following week to, to, to see if he could get treatment. Well, we anointed him with oil. The oil, in case you, in case you didn't know, uh, is, is something that uh, the, the Bible does prescribe for those who are sick. I guess you could call it a divine prescription, right? It's uh, topical. <laughs> you put it on the skin. But the Bible tells us if there's any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church to anoint you with oil and to pray for you, and the prayer of faith will, will heal the sick. And so we prayed for him. We anointed him with oil. And he said as soon as we put the oil on his, on his forehead, and, and there's nothing magical or, or powerful about the oil in and of itself. It's just an act of obedience. And in the scriptures, the oil is, is symbolic for the anointing, the, the empowering, the power the Holy, of the Holy Spirit. And so we prayed for him. He said as soon as we, we laid our hands on him and anointed him with oil, before we even said a word, the pain just disappeared. And um, after we prayed for him, I felt like the Lord was telling me, you know, ask him, does he feel anything? Because he was getting ready to walk off. And I said, did you feel, you feel anything? And then that's, that's when he told me that, that, that God had healed him. So that's why I wanted to give the opportunity, if there's anyone here today who felt something or sensed that God was healing, maybe he didn't feel anything, and that's okay. Because for, as for me, you know, I don't, I don't experience any pain with a condition that I've, I've battled. I don't have any pain. I'm just believing that the next time, you know, I go in for, for lab work, the lab work is going to confirm what God has done. You know, I had prepared a message today, but, and I, everything I've said so far I hadn't planned on saying or doing. So, I may have to change gears a little bit here. The Lord desires to, to heal. He desires to work miracles in the lives of believers and unbelievers. You know, the Word of God tells us in Romans chapter 2 that it was the goodness of God that led us to repentance. The goodness of God demonstrated. I feel like sometimes as Christians we get so religious that we forget that God wants to demonstrate his power and his goodness in the lives of those of us who do not know him, have never received him, never believed on him as Lord and Savior. But if we look, and I've been reading the Gospels to refresh my memory on how Jesus lived and walked. And when I read the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, I see a Savior 
who was good to everybody he encountered. Many of whom, most of whom, I guess we could say, were not saved or did not have a faith in, in God that you and I have come to know. And I think about Peter, the one that we all know as, as the, the great apostle, the, the great disciple who made a lot of mistakes but also did a lot of things right because Jesus was good to him and, and he loved Jesus even though he, he denied him three times the night that Jesus was betrayed and arrested and, and went into the hands of, of Roman soldiers. You know, I, I read about uh, the time when, when Jesus and Peter first met. And Jesus, Jesus was teaching. And Peter said, Master, I haven't caught any fish all day. Peter said, I've been out all morning. And have not caught a thing. And Jesus said, send your boat out again. And Peter said, Jesus, did you hear me? I've been fishing. Peter was a fisherman. That's what he did for a living. He was having a bad day at work. Have you ever had one of those? Jesus said, send your boat out one more time. All Peter knew, really, I guess, about Jesus is that he was a great teacher. He'd been hearing him teach. He knew he was a holy man. And out of respect for this holy man, Peter said, well, because I respect you, I'll do it one more time. Jesus was in the boat with them. They go out into the sea one more time. Peter throws out his net, and what happens? He catches so many fish that his net cannot hold them. They were breaking. And so he has to call some of his co-workers, some of the other fishermen, to come over and help him retrieve these fish. That's a wonderful story, but my favorite part about that story is this, that when they came back onto land, and Peter, the wheels are turning, and he looks at Jesus, and he says, depart from me, for I am a sinful man. Just because, just be, now, Peter why did Peter say this? It wasn't that Jesus was feeding him the Ten Commandments. It wasn't that Jesus was following the specific program that we all learn in our evangelism classes. Jesus ministered to Peter's felt need. His felt need was, I need to catch fish so that I can put food on the table, so I can provide for myself and for my family. And the result of Jesus ministering to and meeting Peter's felt need was Peter feeling conviction in his soul, in his spirit, that he was in the presence of a man of God. Whether he understood that he was in the presence of God, I don't know. But let's just say because of what we know, he was in the presence of God and he recognized and he said, depart from me. I am a sinful man, and his life was changed. And from that day forward, he followed Jesus. Wow. I'm not saying we shouldn't share the word of God with people, but I believe that when we minister to people's felt needs, when we show the love of God, that opens up the door of people's hearts. That so many other things that we've been trained to do in our evangelism classes just don't do. You know, praying for people, praying for people who are lost. I've heard stories about um, people being in restaurants and, and waitresses, their waitresses coming up. And, and I, am, I want to, I don't know about you, but I want to just turn the tables on Christians' reputations on waiters and waitresses' lives. I've heard time and time again from waiters and waitresses that the Christians are the mean people that show up on Sunday afternoon. And they dread Sunday afternoons. Because we flood the restaurants, and I don't know if we're convicted or what, but most of us are, are grumpy. I shouldn't say most of us. I'm just saying many churchgoers. Let's just say that. I'm sure this church is awesome. 
I'm sure this church is changing, already been in the process of changing the reputation of, of believers in the lives of people who work in restaurants. But I've heard so many people say, you know what, uh, I, I dread Sundays because that's when all the churchgoers, you know, just flood us. You know, we're so busy and they don't leave good tips and, and, and yada, 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 and, and they're hateful to us. And, oh, man, Lord, help us change the reputation because we're representing Jesus. We're representing Jesus. And, uh, but I've heard stories of Christians who, who have, have done a lot to change the reputation of, of, of who followers of Jesus really are. And, and just offering to pray. Just offering to pray. Can I pray for you? Saying that to their waitress, and the waitress just starts crying. Because they said, nobody's ever offered to pray for me before you know we got to remember that acts of kindness that we show really do have the potential to change lives I think about how Jesus changed my life how I was an agnostic an agnostic back in 2001 I had graduated from college and I was looking for work and Nothing was happening week after week. Months went by. Months went by. I had been sending out resumes. I had been filling out applications left and right all over the state. I mean, I was online on the online job searches that were really kind of primitive back in those days compared to what we have now. But I was looking for work as a graphic designer. I was far from God. I believed that Jesus was real. I believe that he was one way to heaven, but I also believe there are a lot of different ways to heaven. That's why I say I was an agnostic. I was really still looking for the truth. Now, some Christians back in those days may have said, well, you need to get saved, Nathan, and then look what God will do. And you know what? There's some truth to that. I believe that there is blessing available to us as believers, that is not available to those who don't know Jesus. I mean, that's just, that's, that's the scripture. But again, as we look at Jesus and look at his life, time after time, he showed the goodness of God by healing the sick, by forgiving sins, by doing, he forgave sins of people who didn't even ask for it. He would walk up to somebody who was lame, laying on the side of the street begging for money and say, your sins are forgiven. That just blows me away. And then he would say, get up and walk. Then they believed on him as the son of God. Well, one night in desperation, because I had grown up in church, I knew how to pray a prayer. I was sitting on the back porch of my mom and dad's house saying, Lord, please help me find a job. I'm ready to move on to this new phase of my life. I have a fiance who I want to marry really badly now, and I really need work. If you are real, please, God, bless me with a job. This is after four months of looking the next day, I go to my local library, and I get on a computer to check my email, and I'd gotten an email from a company in Charlotte, North Carolina, two hours away from our, our home in North Wilkesboro. And they said, well, we're looking for graphic designers. Are you interested in coming in for an interview? I didn't even remember applying for the, the job with this company. I was like, Allison, I was talking to my girlfriend, my fiance at that time. I was like, they want me to come in for an interview. I was like, maybe God is real. And so I go in for the interview. It goes great. In the back of my mind, I'm still thinking, maybe God is real. Maybe the reason that, that company emailed me was because God heard my prayer. Long story short, they hired me. I was one of four graphic designers that they hired. 
400 people applied for the job. I did the math, even though I wasn't very good at math. I was like, that's one out of 100 chance of getting this job. And it was, oh, immediately I fell in love with it. Allison and I, my wife, we got married. We took two weeks to plan our wedding. It was really small. It was up in Blowing Rock. And we um, started our new life as a married couple. I started a new life as a graphic designer. After a couple of weeks of married bliss, Allison pops the question. Nathan, are you ready to start going to church? I said, sure. You know, I'm not opposed to going to church, honey. You know that. I grew up in church. So we heard about this church called Central Church of God in Charlotte. And we go there, and I did not like it. I grew up in a very reserved church where you didn't lift up your hands. You didn't uh, sing really loudly. You, didn't, you weren't joyful about the Lord, even though, you know, you may, some people, I'm sure the people, some of the people that I went to church with growing up were joyful. They just didn't believe in really showing it. <laughs> the message, it was like for the first time ever hearing the gospel, even though I know I probably heard it many times, I really didn't know what it was to be saved. I thought I was saved. But um, I started feeling uncomfortable about where I was in life. But about the third time that we went, the uncomfortableness just went away. And when the pastor gave the altar call, the invitation for anybody who wanted to receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, when he invited anybody to come up, I was in the balcony. I didn't go to the front. I couldn't move. I was so overwhelmed by the love of God. And I didn't pray a sinner's prayer. By the way, I've never seen a sinner's prayer in the Bible. I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm just saying it's not necessary. It's not necessarily what needs to happen for somebody to get saved. And it didn't happen to me. I didn't, I didn't say a sinner's prayer. I just stood there and wept and wept because the presence of God was, and the love of God was just all over me. And I just, I knew I wanted to follow Jesus. I knew when I left there, I wanted to follow Jesus. I didn't know that I was saved. I didn't know the terminology. I didn't know what you know, being born again meant. I just knew I wanted to follow Jesus. And Allison, I looked over at her while I'm crying, and she's crying. And, and we both just said to each other, let's, let's follow Jesus. How's that? And we did. And we've been following him ever since. It's been wonderful. And I just believe... That that was God showing his goodness to me that brought, brought me to him. When he got me that job, even though I didn't know at that time I needed Jesus, all I knew was I needed a job and I needed to buy a wedding ring and I, <laughs> and I needed to get married. Let's just meet people where they are. When we meet people where they are, knowing that we can lead them to something far greater. Let's do that. Let's be available to do that. That's why Jesus said, when you receive the Holy Spirit, you shall receive power. What does that power mean? I believe it's the power to change hearts. I believe it's the power to do the supernatural in order to show people who Jesus is, that He's real, that He is the Son of God, that He is exactly who He says He is. And so Jesus goes on to say, you shall receive power. You shall receive power to be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem. It means locally. That's where the believers were at that time. They were in Jerusalem. And in all Judea, that's Cabarrus County, North Carolina, maybe even the United States. In Samaria, outside the borders, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Now, when it comes to being passionate about evangelism and, and sharing the gospel and, and, and leading people to Christ, you know, some of us, you know, and I've been guilty of being on both sides of the spectrum here. Um, some of us are really passionate about sharing the gospel with people that we work with, people at our school, people in our family that don't know the Lord, or, or people in the, in the community, and that's wonderful. That is exactly what Jesus wants for us. When we're filled with the Holy Spirit, when we receive the Holy Spirit, 
when we receive the Spirit of Christ, He wants us to be passionate about loving the people in front of us. Sometimes we're so passionate about foreign missions because, you know, it's abstract. It's just, and you, we know it's what we're supposed to do. You know, Jesus said, you know, go and teach all that I have commanded you all over the world. Make disciples of all nations. That's, what, that's one thing I'm passionate about. But, you know, we need to be sure that we love the person in front of us. The person in front of us. And um, when I think about the person in front of us, now this is in the context of, of foreign missions. Um, because this is a story about my wife, Allison, just recently. She was at the grocery store. And uh, the sample lady was, was giving out samples of something. And, and she noticed Allison was a white lady. You don't see a lot of white people where we live in, in San Pedro Sula, Honduras. And, um, you know, she's, she's getting flagged down by the sample lady. And the sample lady just wants to strike up a conversation. She wants to get to know Allison because it's fascinating to her, you know, that there's a, there's a white lady living in, in her country. And so, anyway, they start talking a little bit. And, and Allison, you know, she's kind of in a hurry. But she realizes that, you know, there's value in the person that God puts in front of our lives. And we've got to recognize that people that we encounter could be people that God wants us to encounter for a divine purpose. And the lady's asking her, you know, what are some key, you know, are you married? What are some, key, are you a missionary? What are some keys to, to um, a happy marriage, a good, strong marriage? Because this, the sample lady was engaged to be married. And Allison said, well, gosh, you know, that's a complicated um, question, a complicated answer. But I could just summarize it by saying that you put God first. And the sample lady started crying. And she said, you know, I've asked a lot of people that question. You're the first person that's said something like that. And Allison could sense that, that the Lord was really in this moment. And, and Allison said, well, do you know the Lord? Do you know Jesus? She said, no. She said, well, well, let me introduce you to him. And she explained the gospel to her just real simply. And, and she said, I want to know Jesus. I want to be saved. And so Allison prayed with her, and, and she, she got saved that day. And how many of us think about, you know, when we go to the grocery store, we could change somebody's life forever? I don't many times, but I want to more. I want to more. There was a time when um, we were ministering, going out and praying for people in the middle of Central Park in San Pedro Sula, Honduras, and uh, there's probably a city of a million people. Central Park is where a lot of people that the church folks don't want to minister to or talk to because there's a, an attitude, unfortunately, in, the, in the, many of the churches there that, you know, you don't, you don't talk to people who are different, people who are like prostitutes and, and homeless and drug addicts and things like that. And you know, what? We are the body of Christ. Who is Jesus Christ? What did he do? Who did he spend most of his time ministering to when he walked on this earth? I'm just saying that so many, so many times the body of Christ does not resemble Christ. And Jesus laid down his life. He, he gave up his body to reach those who are furthest from him. And um, God gave me a, a word of knowledge. It's one of the gifts of the Spirit listed in 1 Corinthians 12. And the gifts of the Spirit, word of knowledge is the first one, I believe, that's mentioned, one of the first two. And this word was, it, was, it wasn't really a word at all. It was an image of a, a, an older gentleman who was wearing an old baseball cap and a, a worn-out T-shirt, and, and he was... Um, probably in his 70s, looked like he had been working outside all of his life, had salt and pepper hair. And that was an image that I saw as I was praying before we went to Central Park. We went there, and broke up into teams, our missionary team. And as you know, we went, we prayed for people, shared the gospel with people. As we were getting ready to leave a couple hours later, I hadn't seen this gentleman yet. We were getting ready to load back up into our little, little van 
And all of a sudden, I saw this man. He looked at me and he said, how are you? In broken English. And I said, oh, I'm good. I'm well. How are you doing? And I realized, as I'm sitting here talking to him, it's the man that I saw earlier that day in my prayers. He had that old, worn-out worn out baseball cap, that old, worn-out T-shirt. And it was exactly, he was exactly who I saw. I walked up to him and I said, um, I, I want to ask you something. I said, do you believe in, in, in Jesus? And he said, yes, I do. Now, he was already a believer. <clears throat> but he said, are you a missionary? I said, yeah, I am, as a matter of fact. And he said, well, I've been here for the past two days waiting on you because the Lord told me if I went to Central Park, the missionary would come and pray for me. I've needed prayer for my knees because I have arthritis. Will you pray for me? And we did. We, as a team, prayed for him, laid our, our hands on his knees. There was one young lady who was part of the, the short-term mission team that was with us, visiting from the States. She was 16. I laid my right hand on his left knee. She laid her hand on his right knee. We prayed. After we prayed, I said, do you feel any different? He said, well, my right knee feels better. <laughs> I felt this warm tingling in my right knee, and the pain is gone. And it was the young lady, the 16-year-old. 16-year-olds can do great things by the power of God. And I asked the, I asked the young lady whose name was um, Amy, I said, will you pray for his left knee? And she did, and his left knee was healed. And he got up and started walking. He said, I have not felt this good in a long time. And he started crying. And he said, you know, people call me Zacchaeus because I'm so short. He said, now I really feel like Zacchaeus because I feel like I've had an encounter with the Lord today. Now, we need to be passionate about reaching the people in front of us and ministering the love and the power of God to people in front of us. But at the same time, we cannot ignore the fact that he has called us to minister in some way to people who are on the other side of the globe. That could be through our prayers. That could be through uh, our financial giving. You know, when the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians, excuse me, in Philippians chapter 4 the, the, the verse of scripture that we all like to quote, Philippians 4.19, And my God shall supply all our need, all your need, all my need, according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I love that scripture, and that's a scripture that we should stand on. But at the same time, <clears throat> he's saying that as a response to the Philippians' generosity to his mission work. Philippians, the church of the Philippians, was one of the most generous churches that we see Paul write to in all of his letters. And I love how he talks about their giving by saying that their, their offering that they had just sent to him is a sweet-smelling savor and an honorable sacrifice to the Lord. I mean, that is profound <clears throat> to me. That's profound to me because what he's saying is, is that when we give to others, when we give and express generosity to others, and whenever we give to the work of the gospel, it is as if we are giving to the Lord. It is as if we are offering a sacrifice to him. And what is it for? <clears throat> it is for reaching those who have never heard the good news of Jesus Christ. And that is our mission with Go To Nations. As I mentioned before, it's so that every tribe, tongue, and nation can hear the good news of Jesus Christ. Now, that was so abstract to me until 2009 when I was hearing the call to full-time missions. When Allison and I went to Guatemala for the first time, we went 
for eight days, and I thought, well, these eight days are going to change my life. They're going to change the way that we do ministry here in the States, and it did. But what God was ordaining is that that short-term mission trip wake us up to the need for the gospel to be preached in all nations, not just in our communities, not just in our state or in this nation. Do you believe that God loves the people of Honduras? Do you believe that he loves the people of Africa? Do you believe he loves the people of Russia? He does. He loves them just as much as he loves us. But it took me a while to get that in my thick skull. But it all changed when I went to Guatemala and Allison and I were there. And I want to try to keep track of the time because I did have to change directions a little bit. But halfway through that short-term trip, folks, i got to be honest with you, I was ready to go home. I was ready to get back to our youth pastoring in Monroe, North Carolina. I was ready to get back to Pizza Hut and, and McDonald's and sitting in my cubicle. And I was ready to get back to what was comfortable, air conditioning. How many of you like air conditioning? Oh, man, Lord. In northern Guatemala, those luxuries just aren't there. And we were working, oh my goodness, we were working from sun up to sundown. We were going to these villages two or three hours away from the missionary base. And we were packed in this little van that didn't have air conditioning. We were in there like sardines and the roads were so horrible that, oh my gosh, my fourth and fifth, um, uh, what do you call it, disc? Yeah, I mean, they were out of commission. No, they weren't that bad. But I was just praying, Lord, sustain me. Lord, please, may the rest of this trip go by just like this. Lord, Lord, please. And I was thinking about, you know, man, I want to be able to pat myself on the back from doing this cool mission work. I can put it on Facebook, and people can be proud of me. And, man, that's awesome, Nathan. And my motives were not in the right place. Now, I mean, my motives were mixed. I mean, I'm not saying it was just 100% me just wanting to be me, wanting to do what's best for me. I mean, I loved the people, yes, but God had to shake me up a little bit whenever my wife said, Nathan, I feel like we're called to do this full time. What? <laughs> and in my pride, <laughs> in my pride, I said, Allison, um, I haven't heard from God <laughs> about this, so I, I really don't think so. And um, about an hour after that discussion, I find myself at this medical clinic. <clears throat> and Allison is a nurse. My wife's a nurse. And she and the other missionaries that are part of the medical staff are setting up the clinic. And I'm going to be preaching that day. And I'm looking forward to preaching. But I'm not really thinking about the fact that Jesus really wants to show himself to these wonderful, precious, beautiful people. And I got away by myself to pray. And I was like, Lord, I realize that I, I am not where I need to be spiritually. God, change my heart. And then all of a sudden, I just sensed his compassion, the compassion that he has for these people coming into me. And I began to weep. And I began to ask God for forgiveness and thank him for giving me this privilege and that people would really come to know him, not just pray a prayer, not just agree with me, and not just allowing me to, to use my gifts and my talent of preaching or whatever, but that they would come to know Christ. And oh my goodness, what a wonderful, life-changing day that was. And I said, Lord, whatever you want me to do, I'll do it. And the people came, they flooded this, this clinic, and, and kids who are normally outside of the, the clinic playing were, were standing at the door or looking in through the windows to hear the good news of Jesus. And it was incredible. And as I sat there, after three hours of, of doing the clinic, as I sat there and just pondered on what God had done that day, not just there at the clinic, but in me, I wondered... Is he calling us? So long story short, Allison and I got back to North Carolina. But as the old cliche goes, our heart was still in Guatemala. And we got confirmation that God had called us. But 
the verse of scripture that God had put on my heart. One thing I just forgot to mention. When I was praying for God to, to, to forgive me and, and change my heart, change my motives, purify my heart that day at the clinic, he reminded me of a verse of scripture that I'd memorized years ago, but it took on a new meaning for me that day, and that was Mark 12, 31. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. And I realized that my neighbor is not just who's living near me, not just the people that I know, and not just the people that, that even live in my, my home country. It's for everybody. Jesus and his love is for, for everybody. Amen. Hallelujah. Would you just pray with me right now as we, as we close and, and just invite the Lord, invite the Lord to speak to you about his great commission, about his purpose in your life. What is your role in Acts chapter 1, verse 8? What is your role? What is your role? What is your role? Lord God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the goodness that you've shown us, for the love that just covers us and fills us up. In Jesus' name, my prayer right now is that you would speak to us and purify our hearts. Wake us up, Lord. Make us uncomfortable if need be. Oh, God, make us more like your son Jesus who came to seek and to save those who are lost, who came and made disciples who came and told us that was our purpose is to make disciples Jesus Father Holy Spirit have your way have your way during these next few moments in Jesus name Amen there may be someone here who's feeling the call maybe someone here who is feeling the call to missions if that's you I want to pray for you doesn't mean you're making the the commitment maybe you're just saying Nathan I need prayer about this because I've been feeling something or I'm feeling something I'm sensing something right now I want to pray for you I invite you to come Maybe someone who is feeling the call to, to minister locally, evangelistically, in local missions. I want you to come and I want to pray for you. Thank you, Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, for bringing us here today, for reminding us, Lord God, of, of your heart, for those who are far from you, God, for those who are hurting, for those who are lost, but maybe they don't even know it. I just pray, Lord God, that you would fill us afresh with your love, with your spirit, with your fire, in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Fill us afresh, God. Empower us, God, with your Holy Spirit. Empower us. Fill us again, in Jesus' name. I just want to give one more invitation. If there's anyone who would say, I just want a fresh fire, a fresh passion, to be able to go out today and this week and minister to people, pray for people, and see the miraculous and see people come to know Jesus or see people at least come closer to knowing Jesus if that's you this altar is open this altar is open and he is available to fill you up to to empower you to refresh you to 
fill you with his heart to give you the mind of Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we just praise you one more time. I believe that lives are going to change today. I believe that through us as the body, lives are going to change today. I believe that through you, brother, sister, lives are going to change today. We just make ourselves willing vessels, willing vessels who love others so much that this life, that this world is going to be turned upside down by the power of God. Amen. If you agree with me, just lift up your hands right now. Let's just offer up one more just act of worship. Just say, here am I, Lord, send me. Here am I, Lord, send me. Here am I, Lord, send me. Send me where you want me to go. When I go to the grocery store, God, I'm going to be on the lookout. I'm going to be open to the leading of your Spirit. I'm going to be open to say and to do whatever you'd have me to say and do. And by your love, this thing called evangelism is so much easier. By our willingness just to bless people and show unwavering kindness to people and goodness to people by you, this thing called evangelism is so much easier. By your love and by your Spirit's power, this thing called being a missionary or being a part of of world missions is just something we're passionate about and it's so much easier hallelujah thank you lord yes lord oh thank you jesus yes lord thank you lord this has just been wonderful thank you lord this has been awesome thank you lord just bless you Lord we love you Lord and I just bless this church right now every single one of you I bless you in the name of Jesus God bless you for just just listening for being here for worshiping the Lord bless you for being a beloved son and you are a son and daughter you are a son and daughter of your Heavenly Father and he loves you he loves you thank you Lord also wanted to uh, invite you to come speak to me after the service today if you would like to know more about how you can partner with us in our mission work to Latin America and by the way our, our mission in Latin America because it has been a mission field for so long and there are so many spirit-filled churches there we praise God for that now it's time to launch the Christians of Latin America into other parts of the world where the gospel has not been preached so that's what we've been doing through our own evangelism discipleship mentoring our schools of ministry and Bible schools and all of that our purpose is to launch Latin Americans into the mission field in the Middle East and other regions of the world. So you can do that. You can have fruit in that by partnering with Allison and I through your prayers and, and monthly financial support. If you'd like to know more about that, if you'd like to sign up for our newsletter, anyway, all of that information is with me back here behind the church. God bless you. Love you all. And um, if you would stand with me, please. Brother, would you come and, and dismiss us in prayer? Thank you. God bless you. Can we give God a hand of praise for the bishop that came into this house? I am convinced... I am convinced that we are in the last days. 
I know, I know as growing up in church, you hear that, but I am convinced. Listen, hear, 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 hear the word that I'm trying to speak to you. I am convinced that the coming of the Lord is at hand. Haraboshe. And we, Brother Wesley, have got to be about the Father's business. And if I, if I hear the bishop's heart, it's not about a position. It's not about a credential. It is about the love of the Father. And everybody in here has a story. Can, listen. Can we just get hooked up with the Holy Ghost? Because when we get hooked up with the Holy Ghost on a day-to-day -day basis, and we just fall in love, and we go after, and we're in pursuit of Jesus, and we get connected to Jesus, His love is not only going to overflow us, if it starts overflowing us, guess what? It's going to overflow out of us. How many people understand that you are in the right place at the right time for such a time as this? When God created everything in this universe, he specifically made you for year 2018 to sit under Remedy Church's pastor, to hear this bishop come in and bring a message of hope and deliverance to the nations. He's called to the nations. You may be called to your neighborhood. What are you doing, church? What are you doing for the Lord? What are you doing for the kingdom? Are you so self-consumed about what's going on? Help me up in here, Holy Ghost. I'm saying this from my heart of the Father. It's okay. We all, everybody in here goes through problems, right? Yes? It's okay, but how many people know that greater is he that's on the inside of you than he that is in the world? It's time to pick up our cross, Jesse Jordan Fuller, and go to the nations. Go to who's around you. You are an influence to somebody. I am convinced that the coming of the Lord is at hand. Hey, Oroboshe, and Sister Heather, I don't want to go to heaven empty-handed. I want to go to heaven to know that my life was spent and poured out, that I did everything I could. Donnie Parker, everything that I can. everything that i can everything poured out sister jane there's still purpose for you sister the prayers that you've offered up goes and, it, and then god listens and hears there's still purpose hear the call of the father i'm sending you i don't want my spirit to be contained within these four walls I don't want what I pour into you to just stay and become stagnant. I want to use you for my kingdom and for my glory. My friend, when you get to heaven, when you get to heaven, sir, don't you want to go and see Jesus? And as you stand before the Father, and he says, well done, thy good and faithful servant. But then he turns you around. Hey, old Oboshe, and says, look at the people because of you who came to know, know Christ. I'm not trying to prolong the service, but I, I'm feeling an unction from the Holy Ghost. I'm feeling the call of God. I'm saying, Brother Ron, we got to be about the Father's business. Can we be so stop self-consumed with football and where we're going to eat and what's going on? And can we not spend time with Jesus? Sandra, I'm tired of just coming to church. I don't want to just do it here. My Jesus, there is six more days in the week that I don't know about you, but there's no other place I would rather be. And see, when I get along with Jesus and I get hooked up to the Father, He shows me things. And I don't know about you, but I've got to do the work of the Father. My life will not be satisfied. There is no, I love my wife to death, but there's certain things that God can do that she cannot. Do you feel that? Do you feel that, Sister Kay? Do you remember what it was like when you stood outside of your home and watching it burn but there was something inside of you that just said god i just got to offer up praise see that doesn't make sense to the natural man it doesn't make sense how can she up there worshiping god but see that ministered to somebody if she can do it i got to know that jesus sister robin 
We got to be about the Father's business. Listen, there's more to life than what you've been experiencing. Do you hear that? There's more to life. Sweetheart, you got a story that needs to be told. You cannot be hidden any longer. God is wanting you to take the veil. How many people in here want to be about the Father's business by the show of hands? Now, out of your own mouth, I want you to repeat these words. Say, Father, I'm tired of doing things my way. I'm all about your business. So from this day forward, there's no turning back. Open me up. Empty me out and fill me up with your spirit that I may reach the lost in the mighty powerful name of Jesus and the house said amen <laughs> Remedy Church I love you I'm so good to be so good to be in God's house let's not forget our Wednesday night service let's not forget our pastor let's not forget that he is actually I prayed the other night for him and I said God I'm praying that there comes a place that he actually, where his foot actually stepped where yours did. And that the Holy Ghost will just encounter him. I'm not looking for an experience. I'm looking for an encounter. Because how many people know that when the head is blessed, the body... So when we're praying for our pastor, we're literally, hold up our shot. We're literally praying blessings upon not only him, but what goes from the head, Brother Ron, is going to come down and trickle all the way down. <laughs> if he didn't go, dang it, I was going to go. <laughs> Let's remember uh, our, our pastor in prayer. And my friend, I'm agreeing with you. I claim healing power virtue so that the name of God can be glorified not only in your life but see God will bless you because he knows that his name will in return get glory because it's not a hold up I shall help me Holy Ghost it's not about your healing it's about what God's gonna do through the healing somebody in here can somebody just yes I want you to bump your neighbor and say, ain't God good? And God is faithful. Ain't he faithful? My Jesus, can we? I don't know about you, Brother Brown, but I can't wait to get to heaven. I read a verse in the Bible the other day. It says the things that we experience now is just a foretaste of thing to come. Father, I love you. And God, I'm not trying to prolong anything, but Father, I just feel your presence. And within myself, God, I don't want to leave. So God, I, I feel like Moses, where it says, God, if your presence doesn't go with me, I would rather just stay. So God, I'm asking you from the bottom of my heart that your presence and what we've experienced and felt this morning would not be just contained within these four walls but as we walk out of those doors God we take the glory and we take your spirit with us for father this is just a building and no order by and no building God can contain your glory I pray I just feel this in my spirit I pray that the best days are ahead of you that greater things are still in store that my glory that i'm deciding to pour out on you you have not seen or felt before may us always be willing vessels god and open and pliable to your will and to your purpose god may we stop being so selfish god and if there's areas in our life god i pray god that you would rip the veil off of our eyes god that scales would fall off god and we will see you for who you truly are 
Now, Father, as we go, I pray a hedge of protection around everybody in this house. I pray a hedge of protection around our lost loved ones, God, that don't know you. But soon, God, they're coming. They're coming home. Father, I just honor your presence. I just worship you. And I just magnify the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. For the time is now, for I say, for the time is now. No more hiding, no more second guessing my love for you. For now is the time that I'm calling you home. For my purpose and plan for you will be revealed to you when you open up to me, says the Lord. Hallelujah. I don't know who you are. But there's nothing that you can't lay down. Don't prolong this time. When the Holy Ghost shows up, he is to bring forth liberty. Liberty not only for the sinner, but also for the believer. and minds clear listen church I don't KFC still gonna be open in 30 minutes hold on but brother Ron the Holy Ghost came up in this room if you need to leave you can roll and I'm not gonna preach a sermon but I know there is significance to when the Holy Ghost shows up he doesn't just show up for no reason there's somebody into this house that needs to lay something down. This is what I see in the spirit. It's as if there's something over their mouth, Daniel. Something that's covering them and it's causing suffocation. It's causing suffocation. Help me, Holy Ghost. And it's wearing you out. It's wearing you out. And God says today, I've came by here to deliver, oh, to deliver you. 
So one more time. If the Holy Ghost is dealing and speaking to you about whatever, ain't none of my business. And it resounds in your spirit that there's something in your life that is cutting off air supply. Don't deny the Father. Don't deny the Father. He's came by here for you. If it's just for one, will he not leave the 99 somewhere and go running after the one? Okay, Dad. Who are you? Who are you that God loves so much that he would choose to interrupt a closing? Because God says, I want to intervene into your life. Because the path that you're on is leading to destruction. No. You're not a bad person. That's not what I'm saying. This is just what I hear in the spirit. There's something going on on the inside that's that's causing a hindrance for you. Hear the word of the Lord. And if you continue on this path. If you continue on this path. I'm really trying, but I have to obey the Lord. If you continue on this path, destruction awaits you. But God has come by here today to call you by name, son and daughter. I'm not going to prolong the Lord any longer. I'm not going to wait any longer. If this is you, I just want to invite I just want to invite you here as a sign of surrenderance and obedience to the Father. If there's any more right now, listen, while the water's turning. Come here, Bishop. Will you come pray? Come here, Bishop. Come up here and pray. If there's any more in the house, listen, if you have to leave, trust me, I understand. I got I, I know. But right now, we got to be about the Father's business. Sometimes, sweetheart, it's hard to step out. It's hard to step out from your comfort zone because everything feels so comfortable. Everything feels like everything's good. I'm okay. But God says, I'm calling you to a deeper, higher place. And in order to get there, you've got to step out from where you are. And you've got to come down to me, surrender everything over to me. See, it, the reason we can't get filled up with God, Sister Sandra, is because we have things inside of us that needs to be emptied out first.